switching from conventional lighting to polarized lighting can take an image of crystals that look like this and turn it into one that looks like this. Using a polarizing filter on your camera increases contrast and introduces attractive color elements. Polarized light is light that has had its vectors aligned somewhat parallel. If it passes through a polarizing filter that has been rotated so that its orientation is perpendicular to the orientation of the incoming light, the two cancel each other and you get a black background. If you then insert a sheet of crystals between these two, the crystals rotate the light from the source so that it can now pass through the polarizing filter. Color effects are created because the amount that the light is rotated is uh, dependent on its frequency as it passes through the crystal. So colors are rotated different amounts and therefore end up appearing brighter. If red is rotated more than blue, then that area will look more red when it's photographed. The most convenient source for polarized light is the LCD monitor from a computer. I found that since the monitor is wired to the computer that the easiest platform to use is simply to put the mo uh, monitor on top of the computer. Because the platen or the glass plate on which the crystals grow will have a thin layer of liquid on it, it's important that this be perfectly level. Otherwise, the liquid could flow off to one edge and damage the monitor. Use paper shims underneath the edges and a level to make sure that this is level. The glass platen has to be elevated above the monitor by about three quarters of an inch. The reason is that if the depth of field of your lens is great enough, if the glass is on top of the uh, monitor, besides the danger of scratching the surface of the monitor, the pixels that make up the image of the monitor uh, will also be in focus, focus and will give the uh, impression of a checkerboard effect behind the crystals, which is very unattractive. Depending on what type of tripod you have, uh, you may find that you have to take the center shaft off, invert it, so that the camera is actually suspended below the tripod. I needed to do this to get close enough uh, and over the middle of the uh, monitor uh, to get a good image. Also, you want to make sure that the platen or the glass plate is quite a bit smaller than the monitor. That allows you to move it around to focus on the most interesting area of crystal growth. I prefer using a macro lens, in this case a Canon 100mm, because it allows me to get the lens close to the platen and focus in on the small details of the crystal growth. With polarized light, this makes a more interesting video or image. If you're going to do video, it's very important that you grow a sheet of crystals first so that you can set your exposure before you uh, start your time-lapse photography, if that's your goal. Whatever timer you use for triggering your camera, if you're doing time-lapse photography, uh, you'll have to do a test run ahead of time to see how fast the crystals grow. If you live in an area of low temperature and high humidity, because the crystals grow as the water evaporates, they will grow much slower and you may need to set the intervals at uh, three to six seconds uh, for e between each image. In my high desert location, our humidity is very low and I set it for between one and two seconds. Again, depending on that particular day, how fast the crystals are growing. If you're using a full frame uh, camera, with a macro lens, I find that it takes about 10 minutes for the crystals to grow from one side of the frame to the other. Use that to determine how many frames you'll need to take. 
When you assemble the frames into a time-lapse video, don't be afraid to use slower fro uh, frame rates down to 15, even 12 frames per second if you don't have enough frames to get sm smooth motion. You don't really see a jerkiness unless you get below about 12 frames per second. I like to shoot for 30, uh, but many times if that results in a video that's too short, I will s stop it down to 20 or even 15 frames per second. If you're posting the video on YouTube, don't worry about the frame rates. The YouTube uh, processing uh, software will take care of all of that. When setting up the camera, make sure that the lens is perpendicular to the surface of the platen. In this configuration, it's very easy to get the lens tilted one way or the other. If you're doing macro work, you can uh, the angle can result in one side or the other being out of focus because the depth of field is so shallow. If you plan on doing time-lapse photography, you need to make sure that all of your timeout uh, indicators are set to never timeout. In my computer, I actually had three. One internal to the monitor itself, one for the computer, and inside the computer, another one for the monitor. Set all of these for at least an hour. I set them for never. If you don't do this, the defaults, usually five minutes or so, uh, will turn the monitor or computer off long before you get all of your video. This is what the polarizing filter looks like. Slightly gray, but pretty much clear. What's different about it than most filters is that it has a ring that threads into the camera and then it has a rotating ring that actually holds the filter so that you can screw it into your camera lens and then rotate this to get the orientation you want. I recommend avoiding using lenses out of um, polarized sunglasses. They will work but they tend to be tinted which is going to throw your color off and they tend to be curved so that you can have some uh, focus issues near the edge of your frame. With the test crystal platen uh, backlit by the monitor and the polarizing filter in place, slowly rotate the filter until the background becomes as dark as possible. Right about there. And then set your exposure. for what you find the most attractive. And you're set, you're ready to go.